Nerd Wallet, the digital platform that matches consumers with financial solutions, reporting a strong second quarter despite economic headwinds. Revenue is up 14% year over year. Its loan business dropped 4% on lower demand for mortgages and student loans. Nerd Wallet has an inside look at how consumers are reacting to higher interest rates and tightening lending standards. Joining us now, early, early for him, the company's founder and CEO, Tim Chen. Tim. Appreciate you getting up. Um, so the, the quarter itself, better than expected, but you got some headwinds. I'm particularly curious about what you're seeing from lenders. How are the lending standards perhaps tightening up, especially for near prime? Yeah, thanks for having me back. Uh, I'm really proud of that team. I mean, we grew in a quarter when many in our industry were shrinking. Uh, we're taking market share, and we're uh, growing into a maturing cost base with margins up four points year over year. Uh, to answer your question, you know, banks are remaining conservative. Uh, you've got things like uh, the commercial real estate concerns. Uh, you've got consumers uh, burning through the rest of the surplus that they built up during the pandemic. Um, and then you've got the coming Basel III revisions. So a lot of that is on banks' minds as they're thinking about managing their balance sheet. Uh, so we're seeing them uh, potentially shy away from some business that they normally would have jumped at in the second half of last year. Uh, things like balance transfer credit cards for prime borrowers uh, that, uh, you know, you really have to subsidize in the first year with that 0% interest, uh, but then become very profitable for the card issuers over time. And so we really think that bit of conservatism is oriented around building up capital for banks um, in the face of some of these headwinds. Huh. Even for the prime borrowers. So, I mean, it seems like the commentary that we have been getting over the previous couple of quarters that the changes were, were in subprime and near prime, but there was still just as much kind of business as usual when it comes to prime. But maybe that investing in the future for the prime borrower, even that's being pulled back on now? That's right. We, interestingly, we're actually seeing a bit of difference versus prior cycles. Uh, you know, credit quality is not the primary driver right now. Uh, in terms of some of this conservatism, uh, we're actually seeing things bottom a bit in areas like uh, near prime lending for personal loans, uh, as you know, banks are a little incrementally less worried about unemployment than they were three, six, and nine months ago. Uh, if you recall, um, banks were largely saying they're expecting unemployment to be five to six percent uh, exiting this year, as they were uh, doing their underwriting, and that's that's gotten a little bit more optimistic. So we're seeing a bit of a bottom and a pickup there. Um, it's really the big part of their balance sheet in terms of dollars and cents, the prime lending, uh, where they're being more conservative to conserve capital. Now, how are you modeling uh, what's going to happen with student loan payments as they return uh, just a few weeks from now? I remember talking to Max Levchin over at a firm a quarter or so ago. He's watching that very closely and what the impact on the consumer is going to be. Any chatter from uh, the lenders or just what you expect to see when that happens? Yeah, I mean, the, the lenders are saying they expect, they expect a bit of a pickup in Q4. You know, internally, we're more conservative. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of different proposals post the Supreme Court ruling from the Biden administration. We've seen legal challenges. So it's hard to say with certainty. Uh, what's going to happen in terms of, uh, you know, when people are going to start uh, being uh, forced to think about refinancing and repaying their student loans. What about your insurance business? Um, that's something that's, you know, newer than the core businesses that you have, but also affected by the macro environment. How is that shaking out in the current quarter and what are your expectations? That's right. I mean, things things are rough. I mean, don't let our 41 percent year over year growth in insurance fool you. Uh, uh, insurers are struggling uh, to be profitable in probably half the states out there. Uh, what's happening is that inflation is making it more expensive to repair a car, to replace a car, to repair a home, to replace a home. And uh, that's causing the need to rise, raise premiums pretty dramatically uh, in many areas. Uh, you know, regulatory uh, state by state uh, premium increases need to be improved by state by state by regulators, right? So there can be a delay there. And during that delay, it can cause insurers to really not want to write new policies. And so that's really what we're seeing. Uh, we think as inflation cools down, uh, a lot of that works through the system and we see a pickup. But that could take quarters. And so we're very muted there in terms of our outlook. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, as inflation cools down, but then in a way, these are higher costs that are going to get passed on to consumers, right? Just in terms of the premiums 
being higher. Um, you know, inflation itself cools down, but those costs stay high. Have you seen something like this before? Uh, not, you know, inflation has been pretty uh, limited during most of our history. So we really haven't seen uh, an effect like this before. And when people are getting notices uh, that their insurance policies are increasing 20, 25% year over year, that's causing a lot of people to turn to NerdWallet to uh, shop for new policies. And the rub really is that a lot of insurers are not actively out there wanting new policies, interestingly. Um, so that's that's kind of the big headwind we're facing there.